morning, Tessera, and welcome to TNN. Today we will be taking a look at Word of the Day, AP Psych, and our favorite high school memories, so stay tuned. Ooh, yeah. Many parish bit. The Word of the Day is Pandandrum. Definition Someone who claims to have a great amount of authority or influence. For example, Mr. Hallam claims that he's a pandandrum. I ain't never really trust you. Uh -uh. Knew I never trust you. You ain't real, you I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing that word. I know, I definitely think it's really true about Hallam too. I think I have great authority, or at least should. Well, I'm Rachel. I'm Brynn. And I'm Chaz. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Today is College Sweatshirt Day for seniors. Seniors, make sure to go sign the college map outside the 500 Hall with what school you're going to next year. Tonight is the Torch of Excellence Awards. If you are receiving an award, please report to the small gym at 6 p.m. Come dressed in semi-formal attire and make sure to bring your friends and family. Thursday is senior word, so make sure to come to the gym on Thursday during tutorial for rehearsal. This event will be at 6.30, and if you are receiving a award, make sure to be there at 6. During the AP Psych year, we have learned about our past, present, and future selves. Here's a video on what our Psych Sticks were all about. Hi, I'm Ranielle here in the 400 Hall reporting for TNN with the AP Psych students to ask them about why they have these sticks around campus. So what do these sticks, um, what are the sticks for? Um, it's to reflect our past, present, and future. And what are on your sticks that like, like what are they mean to you? So my stick is all jumbled. There's no organization, but it's like my future, how I want to I'm going to San Diego State and I want to be a teacher and my past with his like swim and water polo and how they've shaped me and my present, like my friends and my family and just stuff like that. And you're sick? Uh, mine is all about like this is like my best like my best friends and like how like they've all shaped me and like how like I want to have an Australian Shepherd when I get older and like I want to move to Boston pretty soon. If you see anybody around school, maybe ask them about what their sticks mean to them. Or From the 400 Hall, I'm Renee reporting for TNN. I still regret not taking that class. Yeah, it was definitely one of my favorite projects over the years. Yeah, I wish I would have taken it too. Well, that's all I have for my portion of current events. Now over to Bren with the rest. Thanks, Rachel. Freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, are you interested in being in our Grammy award-winning choir program at Tesoro next year? Do you want to have a fun class where you can learn about becoming a better singer, taking trips around the world, and making lifelong memories and friendships? If so, sign up for choir tryouts on the choir room door across from the ASU room anytime this week. We're holding auditions after school Tuesday through Friday, and all you need to prepare is the first two lines of the Star Spangled Banner. Hope to see you there. If you're a senior, make sure to participate in the last few days of Senior Week. Tomorrow is Senior Citizen Day, so make sure to dress up, play Jenga, and eat muffins at break. Friday is a senior luau from 12 to 17, 12, 17 to 2.45. Dress in your best Hawaiian attire and bring a swimsuit if you would like to go in the pool. Buy your tickets now in the ASP office. It is free with cost package and $15 without. It is Memorial Day on Monday, May 28th, so you, we will not have school. Make sure to enjoy your three-day weekend. Seniors, your first day of finals will be next Friday, June 1st. You'll take... You will be taking tests in your third and fifth period. Monday, June 4th, you'll be testing in your second and sixth period. And our last day of school will be Tuesday, June 5th, and you'll be taking your fourth and first period finals. Wednesday, June 6th, there will be graduation rehearsals on the field at 9 a.m. All seniors are required to go to, to pick their seating and receive their caps, gowns, and tassels. After this, there will be a senior luncheon at Dave & Buster's from 1 to 4. It is free with class package or $20 without. The year's almost over, so let's take a look at what everyone's favorite memories are. Hi, I'm Raniel here in the 300 Hall reporting for TNN to ask a bunch of students around Tesoro's campus what their favorite memory from Tesoro this year was, so let's check it out. My favorite Tesoro memory is the Best Buddies prom. It was really fun and it was a good opportunity to connect with our STEP students. My favorite Tesoro memory is when Wild Rivers used to be open and the seniors used to go there for their senior picnic because I used to get to go and go on all the water rides with all the kids. My favorite Tesoro memory was going to the pep rallies. 
My favorite memory this year is having so many great students in my geometry classes. We've had so much fun. I think the, my most favorite memory is get, bonding with all the teachers. Shout out to Mr. Chance. Go Econ. My favorite Tesoro memory is the day that Wyatt started school with me. My favorite Tesoro memory were the school dances and the football games. Um, one of my favorite Tesoro memories when I danced with all the teachers at the Tesoro pep rally. That was really fun. I think that my favorite memory of this year was joining TNN and just having a bunch of like memories with Hallam and his bald head. From the 300 Hall, I'm Raniel reporting for TNN. I have too many favorite memories to name. I definitely think it's really sweet how Wyatt's mom was super excited for him to come to high school. <laughs> yeah, no, I've only been here for two years, but I made a ton of memories with all my friends and lacrosse buddies, so yeah. That's all I have for current events. Over to Chazza Sports. Gracias, Bryn. Baseball's fantastic season came to a close last night after a 10-6 loss to Ayala. Congrats on a great season, boys, and a league championship. Uh, it was a great year for Tesoro Sports. There was a lot of wins and a lot of joys. Good luck to all you seniors in whatever you guys are doing next year. I know you'll be great at it. And juniors, underclassmen, it's your turn to carry the torch. Congrats to every team on a great year, especially my lacrosse brothers. I love you guys. That's all I got for sports. And uh, thanks for the Spanish, guys. Now over to Rachel to finish off the show. Make sure to stick around after the credits for a special video highlighting our ocean and the animals living in it. Tune in for our final TNN episode on Friday for our last personal last time. This has been Rachel. Bryn. And I'm Chaz. Reporting for TNN. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll letter and Chase Kotowitz. Be careful, viewer discretion advised. The topic we'll be discussing today is about how killing whales and dolphins for research purposes affects human health and the environment. The environment is a very precious balance and whales have been in it and swimming around it for over 50 million years according to fossil um, carbon dating so it would be such a shame if we were to kill them now and have them go extinct that would be no fun now whales aren't the only special ones around here dolphins have also been around for close to 50 million years swimming around in this environment that these horrible people are just trashing it's such a shame to lose a beautiful house like this and now it's just all gone Whales and dolphins are being hunted everywhere, but it's really bad in places like Taiji, Japan, Russia, and even Norway are doing dolphin hunts and whale hunts that are upsetting the environment, and when the environment is upset, it ruins such nice places like Loot Lake over here that's now just decimated. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I, I think I know what's happening here. No, 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 don't do it, don't do it, you're better than this, no! It's so terrible to see people like this Japanese monkey king mercilessly slaughter innocent whales in the name of research and go take all of their bits and pieces. This green sea monster represents all the whales and dolphins that are being murdered in various places around the globe. Just like how this one gets cut down into bits and pieces. Based on the dolphin project, Japanese drive hunts kill nearly 20,000 dolphins, porpoises, and small whales every year. Commercial whaling has 
was outlawed in 1986 by the International Whaling Commission, but dolphin hunts remain legal. The dolphin hunters make approximately 32,000 US dollars for each live dolphin they capture. It's so depressing seeing all these whales and dolphins gone, never again to swim in the big blue ocean. But that's how it is currently, and that's why we need to change things so we don't continue killing these poor animals. According to whalefacts.org, a blue whale, for example, can consume as much as 40,000 per day. So you can imagine the impact that this would have on stabilizing the aquatic ecosystem if the blue whale species were to become extinct. If blue whales become extinct, it would upset the balance of krill populations, and the krill would overpopulate and disrupt the ecosystem. We need to help these whales as soon as possible and begin cloning them because their population is declining incredibly fast, and it's so bad for the environment. This graph shows the overall decline in the dolphin's population. It has dropped by 80%, which is staggering. And if we don't do something, it'll continue to drop. The Japanese fisheries have released that they will start hunting whales. The reason behind the hunt is me meant to supposedly be for research. The fisheries hope to capture at least 51 mink whales in the next two months to discover and better understand whale behavior. While these incidents by the one country of Japan don't have necessarily large influence on the dolphin and whale populations as a whole, when they are combined with other factors, there can be extreme consequences. Climate change is also severely changing our own habitat and causing us to adapt. However, climate change is also changing the environment of the whales and dolphins. Climate change is bringing about changes in the water temperature through the melting of ice caps and glaciers. This melting is increasing the temperature of the water globally. This temperature rise, while it may be small, is not insignificant. This changes significantly decreases the habitat of both dolphins and whales. But it's not over for our whale friends. We can build sanctuaries and keep them safe in coves and keep them protected from the whalers who are trying to kill them. Oh, look at that cute whale. It's so nice watching him play. Now it's fun and all to watch the whales and dolphins play nicely in the protected sanctuaries. But what we should really do to keep them all safe is start cloning them so we can get more and more of them. That way, even if a few are killed off by those terrible whalers, we can still keep most of them alive by, by cloning them and saving their species as a whole. In addition to cloning the whales, we can also place strict regulations on the ocean and in the sanctuaries so we can make sure that nobody gets in and takes out whales. We can keep them all in there and have them stay safe. At first, it may appear that other species are benefiting from no longer having to face a predator such as whales, but over time these animals will overpopulate and possibly destroy the population of other species that it feeds on. So whales play an important role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem by making sure other species do not overpopulate and destroy the species below them in the food chain. Even whale poop plays a large role in the environment by helping to offset carbon in the atmosphere. Studies have shown that the nutrients in sperm whale poop helps stimulate the growth of phytoplankton which pull carbon from the atmosphere to provide a cleaner and healthier breathing environment for all animals. Estimates state that as much as 400,000 tons of carbon are extracted for the air due to these whales each year. In addition to feeding carbon fighting phytoplankton, the fact that whale poop simulates the growth of phytoplankton means that it also helps feed other species that feed on phytoplankton for their survival. 
Phytoplankton helps feed the fish, allowing them to thrive and reproduce, and the fish feed many other species that require fish to survive, thus keeping the chain stable. All in all, whale poop plays a major role in maintaining the cycle of aquatic life and is just one of many different things that make whales so important. Whale feces is incredibly important in the ecosystem, but it's not nearly as beautiful and nice as these dolphins swimming in the water. It's so graceful and magical to watch, and it heals my soul. Cloning is one of the solutions that we could use to balance out the whales that are killed from whale hunts and dolphin hunts. Cloning is an experimental procedure that has not yet been tried on whales and dolphins, so this could possibly work to save their whole species. Sometimes the whales go on strike too and they'll kill a person every once in a while, but dang, look at this dub that he cops. Ooh, wait, wait for it. What a shot. Dang. You know, I just want everyone here to know that we do all of this for the whales and the dolphins and all the sea creatures. This is for you guys. This is why we do it. It makes my day just to see the look on those whales' faces.